next presentation is by John Hart. Um, he'll be looking at converged core networks and services, 5G network slicing and convergence, which are key technologies in next generation networks. John joined BT in 1999, working on core IP network technology in the areas of VPN and quality of service on BT's UK IP VPN and global MPLS platforms. He then spent eight years working in the customer environment area, working as one of the technical design leads for the BT Home Hub. He now works in BT's research and technology division with a specific focus on converged core networks research. Right, uh, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for that introduction, Peter. Uh, yeah, so my name's John Hart. Um, I work in a small team that looks at mobile core network research. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about 5G network slicing and convergence. And we really see those two technologies as being key technologies for our next generation um, networks. Um, we've already touched on some of that yesterday, so those presentations from, from Andy about our 5G uh, network uh, and others as well. And uh, Andy gave a good introduction today uh, about network slicing and convergence, so hopefully my presentation will be uh, complementary to those. So we've touched on some of this yesterday again, but I thought it's worthwhile just taking a step back and thinking about where we are in our industry at the moment. Now, we've seen a growing demand for mobile broadband year on year, and that's really driven by video consumption. And so it's a real challenge for BT and for other operators to meet that demand in a cost-effective manner. Traditional services are declining, and again, we talked about this yesterday in the Ofcom uh, presentation and earlier today in the Huawei one. So our voice uh, revenues are declining. Uh, younger generations are using social media in order to communicate with each other. There's high expectations for the evolution of connected devices, so IoT, potentially billions of connected devices, and that presents a real opportunity for operators. And then there's the digital transformation across all industries. And again, we talked about Industry 4.0, uh, autonomous connected vehicles. And as operators, we need to be ready for those types of services. So in terms of the kind of services that we're going to have in the, uh, in the near future, uh, there are things like enhanced mo mobile broadband services. So types of services we've talked about, like uh, UHD video, virtual and augmented reality, interactive gaming, tactile internet, and fixed wireless access. Mission critical, uh, machine type comms, so again, autonomous driving, traffic safety and control, industry automation, and remote surgery. A massive machine type communication, so IoT, smart home, smart business, smart factory, smart energy, smart agriculture, logistics and asset tracking. So there's a real challenge for operators uh, to be able to support all of those services in a cost effective manner. So this brings us on to some of the new technologies that we feel will transform the way we architect our networks. So we've mentioned end-to-end uh, -end network slicing, convergence that can help drive down cost and increase the quality of experience for our users. The 5G use cases that require flexible distribution of functions, so edge computing. And we see NFV and STN as the underlying key enablers for those. So the work in our team are really, is really going to concentrate on those three um, for, for the foreseeable future over the next 12 months. So network slicing, convergence and edge computing, they're really the three key topics in our team. So I'm going to talk to you about a couple of those. So network slicing. Uh, so network slicing is the ability to have multiple virtual networks dedicated to different services, and different service types, all on one single infrastructure. Now there's a number of advantages in doing that. So firstly, it gives you agility without disruption. So as an operator, we really want to be able 
to deploy new services and new features on our network with no disruption to any of the existing ones. Agility is required to compete and to meet market demand. NFV and SDN enable orchestration across slices, although there are challenges still around network slicing orchestration, which I'll come on to later. And the end goal is to have a fully automated deployment of new network slices. Support for different operational models, so different SLAs, uh, for example, security and reliability, may require isolation between different slices. We talked yesterday about the emergency services network. I think that's an excellent example where you would need complete isolation for, for a slice such as that. Uh, slicing can be done on a per service type or even for individual customers. Now potentially uh, you may have conflicting functional requirements, so some of these functional requirements may be mutually exclusive. So for example, you may have high data throughput versus low latency or high, highly mobile versus fixed access. So optimization of each slice for the specific functionality required. There may be alternative approaches in some, some uh, use cases to meet this particular goal. So you might have flexible anchor points or early detection of mobile devices, for instance. So if we were to think about creating an end-to-end -end network slice, it's really all about guaranteeing that end-to-end -end service level agreement. So if we step through the different stages, so at first, when an end-user device connects to the network, it's directed to a slice based on the request and the user profile. And we really want the mobile device to be able to connect to multiple slices at the same time. The radio slicing ensures that the appropriate radio resources are allocated to the different network slices in order to meet the, uh, the SLAs. Across the transport network, that's configured to ensure that traffic belonging to a network slice uh, meets the required SLAs and there are multiple ways that you could do that uh, with MPLSTE, X-Ethernet, dedicated optical layer, MPLS quas classes, time sensitive networking. There's a lot of work that's happening in the IETF at the moment to define some new protocols. So there's one called SPN which is Slice Packet Network so they're really trying to address uh, that requirement. Uh, we've mentioned NFV, um, so I guess the industry uh, over the last five years or so has really got to grips with NFV and what it means for our industry and so the virtualization of the core network will be inherent in, uh, in 5G and that will allow us to do uh, network slicing. Um, microservices can be deployed where required, so again talking about edge computing if you're trying to uh, give a particular latency value for a particular service, you may need to deploy services and nodes close to the edge. And one thing that's kind of being discussed at the moment is when we talk about end-to-end -end network slicing, where is the end? Does it end at the UPF or does it go all the way into the customer data center? We think it's the latter. So again, that's something that needs to be considered in future. I'll talk briefly about orchestration and we saw the, uh, the NFV architecture earlier. Um, when we think about orchestration and again the creation of an end-to-end -end network slice, it starts to be quite complicated and what you really need is a multi-domain orchestrator sitting at the top level that talks to all your different domain orchestrators underneath. So there'll be a radio domain uh, orchestrator There'll be a transport domain orchestrator and a core uh, orchestrator as well. So that's starting to get quite complicated. It gets even more complicated when you think about an end-to-end -end slice that has to span multiple operator networks. You're going to have to have some kind of interlink between operator 1's uh, orchestration tool and operator 2's orchestration tool. So that's starting to get quite complex. There is quite a lot of work in industry, just to mention a couple, there's an EU collaborative project called SliceNet where they're looking into this. We ourselves are involved in TIP, which is the Telecom Info Project, 
and we're leading on the network slicing architecture group and orchestration is uh, the main focus for that group. So we're trying to address some of that. I'm going to move on now to convergence and uh, we saw a talk earlier about media convergence and convergence is really a broad topic and there's different forms of convergence uh, that leverage different assets across fixed and mobile domains. Uh, so products and services so that's aggregating the consumption of fixed and mobile services. Channels to market, so combining the way uh, that we sell services to our customers. Customer service, so an omni-channel approach to enhance the customer experience. And platform, so a unified platform architecture enabling the services across multiple networks. But what we're concentrating on in our team is, uh, is network convergence. So what is network convergence and what can it offer uh, to end users and to operators? So we're really talking about the simultaneous or the alternative access to fixed or mobile, uh, depending on the user needs, so FMC, fixed mobile convergence. Uh, with regards to simultaneous connectivity, we're really talking about um, architectures like Multilink and uh, ATSSS in uh, 3GPP. So that's basically where you don't need any human intervention to move across access networks. It should all be seamless. And that has a consistent user experience across all services, regardless of what access network they're connected to. And we're talking really about single 5G core uh, to manage both fixed and mobile access. And that has a number of advantages. So for end users, it provides them with the best possible customer experience, a single set of identities and credentials, consistent policies and services. So if you think about um, things like um, parental controls, you'd want that to be consistent across both mobile and fixed. Best available network for bandwidth and latency and seamless mobility. Now from an operator's perspective, so as the advantages of the best use of our networks, improved reliability, asset reuse, simplified OSS, new service and revenue opportunities. So there are a number of different use cases and we've just picked three here. Um, in terms of how you could implement convergence, uh, network convergence. So the first one is hybrid broadband and that's basically where the residential gateway in the home acts as the com convergence point. Um, so we've got a residential gateway here, it's got connection to the fixed access, but it's also got connectivity to the 5G RAN. And in 3GPP documentation, this is referred to as the 5GRG, so the 5G residential gateway. Multi-connected broadband, so this is really where the mobile device acts as the convergence point. So you can see there it's got connectivity via Wi-Fi to the fixed access and it's also got connectivity to the 5G uh, radio access as well. Multi-access private network, so this is basically where you've got a router or hub or a uh, higher-end um, Cisco switch or something like that that's connected. To, to broadband and it's got a separate femto cell uh, that's connected into it, so we're using the same backhaul effectively. Now these implementations have a number of advantages, so th they can provide things like bandwidth boost or increased bandwidth, failover if one of, one of the links goes down, the other one you can fall back to, fast provisioning, so it takes us quite a few days to provision broadband in BT, so you could use the cellular access uh, in the interim period. Symmetric bandwidth, and uh, so for certain users, symmetric bandwidth is, uh, is really important for things like photography and video editing where you need to upload uh, large amounts of data. And there are a number of other advantages as well, but I'll, I'll skip past those. I was just going to talk about an EU collaborative project uh, that we're involved in. So this one's called 5GX Cast. And the, the whole point of 5GX Cast is really focused on the broadcast and multicast uh, communication enablers for 5G. 
And the aim is to design a dynamically adaptable 5G network architecture, enabling seamless switching between unicast, multicast and broadcast, and exploiting built-in caching capabilities. I won't go through all of the suppliers that are involved in that project, but you can see the University of Surrey and the University of Valencia, ourselves, the BBC, Telecom Italia, Nokia, Samsung, just to mention a few. <coughs> Again, I won't go into a lot of detail about the project, but just to give you a flavour for it, some of the use cases that we're looking at, it's kind of what we've already uh, discussed, so hybrid broadcast service, so combinations of networks and technologies that can give a seamless user experience as they move between different locations. And the other one is remote live production, so multiple users often require the same feed, making the use of point to multipoint more efficient than point to point. So in summary then, we believe that 5G services present a huge opportunity to operators, which they need to be ready for to meet this new demand. We see network slicing as a key technology and it enables agility without disruption, slice isolation, functional optimization for an operator. However, there are still challenges in regards to management and orchestration. 5G presents a possibility for industry to define a flexible and modular architecture, allowing network providers to operate and manage a single 5G core network, supporting all access types. A network convergence has to be economically viable. It's just not an archi architectural dream, so cost optimization has to be key for an operator. Current reality at the moment is that the current cost base of fixed and mobile networks is, is radically different. So the cost per gigabit or per megabit, sorry, over the fixed, asset, uh, uh, over the fixed network is um, a lot less than over the mobile network. And not all services need or would benefit from convergence. And it's key that we get the standards bodies involved. So at the moment, there's a lot of work in both Broadband Forum and 3GPP, amongst others, to work together to achieve this convergence vision. And that's it from me. Thank you very much.